Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the Parking Car Simulator PLC Programming Part 2. We began using the five steps to PLC programming development in Part 1 for the Parking Car Simulator. This involved determining what must be done, looking at the inputs and outputs, and developing the sequence of operation. Automated car parking is a great way to learn PLC programming. It is easily understood how this system is to function and operate. The 3D graphics on the Easy PLC machine simulators are good for visually seeing the interaction between PLC and the virtual machine. We will continue programming the automated car parking and testing our program. We will be programming with our free Do More Designer PLC software. The Easy PLC machine simulator is part of the Easy PLC software suite. This package is an excellent way to learn PLC programming without the worry of damaging equipment. The Easy Machine Simulator will communicate Modbus TCP with the Do More Designer PLC software. Let's start with the second part of our Parking Car Simulator PLC programming. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start your video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. Establishing communication between Easy PLC Machine Simulator and Do More PLC Simulator. Start the Do More Designer PLC programming software. Connect to the simulator online. PLC Programming, a tutorial for beginners, is an excellent post on how this is done. We will cover how to use the Do More PLC programming software and the Easy PLC Machine Simulator software. Once you are connected to the PLC simulator, select System Configuration. This can be selected under Tools in the Project Browser or on the main menu, PLC, System Configuration. The internal Ethernet port configuration will be displayed for the PLC simulator. Make a note of the IP address of this controller. This would be the same as the computer used for the Do More Designer software. Remember that this PLC simulator is just like having a separate machine. You have to send and receive information from it just like it is independent and not virtual. Start the Easy PLC Automatic Parking Machine Simulator in Start Mode. We can see that we have no PLC connected indicated in the bottom left corner. Select I.O. Drivers on the bottom middle of the screen. The Easy PLC driver is selected by default. Under the Driver pull-down menu, select Modbus Driver. This driver will communicate Modbus TCP, Ethernet, and Modbus RTU serial. Select the down arrow on the driver's name. Select the Configuration button. We can now enter the information for our Modbus driver. Select TCP IP. This means the computer's Ethernet port will communicate with the PLC. The digital inputs from MS to the Do More PLC will start at 100001. This will begin at address 0 due to the offset of 1. Digital outputs from MS to the Do More PLC will start at 1. This will begin at address 0 again due to the offset of 1. Our analog inputs will start at 400001, which is MHR1, beginning at address 0. Select the OK button. The number of inputs and outputs will only matter if all of the number I.O. is equal to or greater than the required amount for the Easy PLC Simulator machine. You can now see the inputs and outputs specified for the Modbus driver. We can manually assign the driver outputs to the PLC inputs and the driver inputs to the PLC outputs. However, the automatic assignment works well and will save you time. Select Automatic Assignment from the Driver option in the main menu. This will automatically assign the PLC I.O. to the Machine Simulator I.O. Select Start Driver and exit from the main menu. On the bottom left side of the window, you will see that driver communicates with the PLC with a green light. Select View I.O. to know the input and output status of the machine simulator. The PLC now has control over the inputs and outputs. We can test the PLC inputs and outputs by calling the Data View window from the Do More Designer software. We are ready now to move on to the next step and develop our ladder logic program. Writing the ladder logic code for the PLC example will be the next step in our program development. The Rix Do More series will provide additional information on the Do More Designer and PLC Simulator. Writing PLC ladder logic programs can be done in several ways. 
Based on the information in part one of this example, this is how I would approach the logic. The program is broken up into five different components. The main logic will control the sequencing. Vacant spot will determine the next vacant spot and level. The park vehicle will handle the parking and return of the vehicle from the different locations. The request vehicle will control and operate the operator panel or HMI to return the, the car. Elevator control will control the movement of the elevator to the different parking locations, loading and unloading. Vacant spot. This subroutine will determine the vacant spot on each floor and determine if the floor is full. The first scan bit will reset all the parking spots. This is done by placing a one into each of the bits. A one means that the parking spot or location is empty and a zero means that the vehicle has been parked. The encode instruction is used to determine the highest bit that is on in the word. If the highest bit is equal or greater than eight, then we know that the floor is full. In this case, floor one, V1, has all the spots available, so the output position value is zero, representing the first bit. The same coding is repeated for each of the other six levels. The output level full bits would be C2 to C7, indicating that the floor is full. The next rung will determine the current floor and parking spot that is available for parking. This will be placed in V10 and V20, respectively. The top floors are done first down to the first floor. If a car is requested, the level of the vehicle ordered is placed in V10. This code will keep track of all the parking locations in the lot. Main logic. A drum instruction is used as the main sequencer logic for the program. The first scan bit ensures that the drum will reset to step zero. The drum will reset if a car is not requested or to be unloaded at step 3. If a vehicle is to be unloaded, the drum will continue to step 11 and reset. The next four rungs of logic in the main will call up each of the different routines. They will control the individual logic for each of the groups. If all of the levels are full, then the sign is controlled. If not, then the free sign is displayed. The inputs on the HMI panel for the car request use a one-shot to increment and decrement the floor, which is MHR1, or parking spot MHR2. Comparison operators are used to ensure that the values for the floor are between 1 and 7, and the parking spots are between 0 and 7. Two one-shots are made to trigger the marking of the parking spot as occupied or not. This will happen when it unloads the automobile into the parking spot or loads the car out. Elevator control. This will control the elevator for our program. The floor number is determined first. Each step in the drum sequencer that sets the floor number will be in this rung. During the initialization step, if a car is requested, then the level comes from MHR1. If not, then the next vacant spot is used. The parking spot is determined next. During the initialization step, if a car is requested, the location comes from MHR2. If not, then the following vacant place is used. The unload location is binary 7, which is all bits on. When unloading the vehicle, the level that is not full is done first. This way, if a car is removed from the previous level, it will be replaced first. So if the car is parked on level 1 parking location 0 to 7 to level 7 parking location 0 to 7. The parking strobe will tell the elevator to move. A timer is set for half a second for the signal of the parking strobe. This will allow the Easy PLC machine simulator to see the and activate the signal. The step complete for the elevator movement is done with the following rungs. If a car is requested, the auto initialize and move to park location is bypassed. Park vehicle. This section of the ladder logic code will control the conveyor belts to move the car in and out of the parking spots. During car loading, if a car is at the barrier and it is down, then we move it up. This will let the car into the parking lot. Once the photo cell at the barrier is not on, the barrier will come down again. The loader tray conveyor will advance so that the car will be loaded onto the elevator. When the vehicle is removed from the parking spot, a one or high bit is placed in its location so that that marks a spot as vacant. 
step request for the vehicle unloading and loading. Unload the auto into a parking spot. This will set elevators to unload the vehicle into the parking spot. A one half second timer ensures that the car has left the elevator conveyor. Set the corresponding bit off to indicate a car has been parked in the location. This is determined by binary bit sequencing for the vacant spot on the floor. Reset unload auto. Unload on the unload station. Rotate and then send out of the parking lot. Stop the conveyors and rotate back the turnaround. This is the end of the program sequence steps. Request vehicle. The requested vehicle will ensure that the parking spot and level contain a car to unload. Move the entered parameters into a work area so we can manipulate the bits. V31 will represent the actual parking spots on the floor and V32 will represent the parking spot selected. The car request must active only on the initialization of the sequence. Check to ensure that the vehicle is present. If the parking spot bit is requested and the actual parking spot location is occupied, zero, then the car request is valid. Reset the, the car request bits after unloading the car from the parking spot or the first scan bit. We can now save our program and write to the PLC. Our program is now complete. Documentation is one of the essential things with PLC programming. Knowing what the program is years after you've dealt with logic can be critical. On the main menu, select Tools, Documentation Editor. All the elements that you have been using in the program are listed. We can now assign names to each of them. You can also call the Documentation Editor using the Control plus D keyboard shortcut. Test the program. Ensure that the PLC is in run mode. We can see the operation of our automated parking. Test the program under many conditions. Request a car during each step of the sequence. Is it responding correctly? When an error in the ladder logic is found, Simple modifications can be done using online programming with the PLC simulator. Move around this easy PLC machine environment and try to account for when sensors fail. This is all part of program testing. You may have to rewrite your ladder logic code if something unexpected happens. This may even mean that you have to go back and change the operational sequence. To help you practice and learn more, here are a few challenges for this automated parking. Add an LED light on the HMI panel to indicate when an invalid parking spot has been entered. This will flash so that the operator will know it has to be corrected. Show the number of cars in the parking lot and the available spots. Set up manual controls in the 3D environment so a vehicle can be parked or removed from this new manual control panel. The Do More PLC simulator will communicate Modbus TCP. This means we can have a remote access to the controller using a separate computer on the network. Create a node red application that will log the daily totals of the parking lot in a SQL database. Let me know how you did in the comments below. All of these additional exercises will enhance your PLC ladder logic programming. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.